Now, it's Britain's biggest trade deal since leaving the European Union. The UK has agreed to join the Indo-Pacific trading bloc, known as the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. When it joins, the UK will become the first European country to enter the agreement. The government estimates it will lead to a £1.8 billion boost to the economy in the long run. Well, to discuss this further, we're now joined by former trade advisor to UK Secretary of State for International Trade, Shankar Singh. And so, Shankar, are you delighted with this deal, this partnership? Yes, I am. I, mean, I think this is a very significant moment. Uh, I would say in the global trading system, it's a seismic moment. Um, as you said, it's the first European nation, first non sort of Pacific country, if you will, uh, to join this trade agreement of 11, uh, 11 countries. Um, and it's, it, it's a game changer, really, because um, for our trading partners and for the rest of the world, it's a huge signal that the UK is willing to take a very different path from the one it's been taking for the last sort of 40 plus years. This is a highly liberalizing agreement. Uh, it is regarded by the world as a plurilateral, which is, a, which is to say outside of the WTO, it is a significant grouping of countries that are like-minded, that are committed to open trade and competitive markets and property rights protection. And the UK has essentially said to the world that we want to uh, interoperate with your, with the rest of the world on the basis of uh, open trade, competition, uh, regulatory competition, uh, and mutual recognition as opposed to harmonization, which is the model that we've previously uh, previously followed. I just wondered, uh, Shankar, I mean, is this likely to lead to more countries wanting to join the CPTPP? Is this going to be an ever-increasing block of, of countries, or is it always going to remain a small number? Well, there, there are already, before the UK acceded, there were a number of countries in the waiting room, as it were. Uh, you had uh, uh, Indonesia and Thailand in, the, in Asia. You had Uruguay and a number of other Latin American countries wanting to, to accede. Uh, quite you know, famously, China and Taiwan are also in the, in the waiting room. But the significant thing is the UK is the first accession country. Um, and so the UK is really demonstrating its global trade leadership. For the rest of the world, uh, they've heard a lot about global Britain. They've heard a lot of the rhetoric. This is the first time the actual execution matches the rhetoric. And it's been noticed. You know, Rahm Emanuel, who was the uh, Obama chief of staff, you know, not, not, not necessarily somebody who's going to embrace the UK's global Britain vision, uh, said that this, this UK accession means that the Indo-Pacific and the Atlantic are, to, his, to use his words, singular. I mean, this is a huge event globally. And many more countries will join. Many other countries who are not Pacific nations will also start to join, I would say. Might I would, America would say. rejoin? And I think it may, uh, you, you've already heard voices in the US now saying, uh, well, if the UK is joined, uh, you know, this is an agreement that we were instrumental in the US in setting up. Uh, we must rejoin this agreement. And I, I suspect that the US will rejoin the CPTPP. It might be some, a few years off, but, but the pressure on, on, the, on the Biden administration or whoever succeeds them to, to rejoin the CPTPP uh, will be enormous. And the, and the reason I ask that, Shankar, is because we've been looking at the sort of the geopolitical formation. People have seen that Russia's getting closer with China and we're saying, are sort of other parts of the world now going to form a block as a sort of form of political persuasion, not just about trade? Absolutely. And I think it, this also makes it more likely that the US-UK uh, FTA will, will again, you know, become a, uh, a runner. Um, the interesting is combination of this and the Windsor framework has totally changed the, the, the dynamic in the US. I mean, you've got senators putting bills on the floor of the Senate demanding a UK-US FTA. So the pressure will rise for that. And you're absolutely right that there is a, there is really a, a big battle for the world's operating system here going on. You've got China with its sort of cronyist, if you will, uh, model uh, or state-based capitalism, if you want to put it in a slightly more diplomatic way. Um, and you've got a competition-based, um, quotes, capitalist model that the West has typically followed. And, and this is the context in which the UK's CPTPP accession, you know, falls. And, and and it will make it a lot easier for, for us to win that competition, that global competition. Uh, and that Singham. will generate more GDP into the world.
Shankar Singham, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning and give us your out, uh, uh, insight.